We are live from a remote location, the dungeon, Pappy's house, where I grew up. Karen's Corner, episode five, or six, or seven. Bar talk. What we got in here, Pappy? Got a lot of pictures here. When you were little, growing up, a lot of your trophies here. Mm -hmm. Some of my trophies are up here. Yeah, what's this, Elmer's College? Elmer's College, I was Danny Field of it, man, 1974. What's this? Wow, uh, that's a shot glass with your finger in it. A lot of people don't know this, but my finger is still here. Here's the tip of it, right here. It's very black. Many people have taken shots on this, actually. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've taken one myself. You always want to spit the finger back in. Yeah, I, somebody will swallow your ones. Oh, yeah, it is. Terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Bar Talk, Episode 5. At a remote location, the dungeon, with Pappy. At his bar. Now, tell us a little bit about this place, the dungeon. This is where Tom Penn Jr. originally started training. That's where it all began. That's where it all began. I mean, we got the name Dungeon from the Pro Wrestling, uh, one of the Hart Foundation guys. What was his name? Yeah, Owen Hart. Brad Owen Hart. Hart used to train in the Dungeon. Yes, their dad trained him in the Dungeon. So we named this place the Dungeon. This is actually a garage. <clears throat> and this is where Tommy first started. Well, he started in the living room, but eventually moved into here to so get more equipment. Yes. But this is where he started. Now the there's the started. equipment's not really here. We got some bench back here, but a lot of memories on the walls. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. A lot memories, of memories. Finger. I mean, check the wall out, man. The wall of shame. Everything's in here. Mm hmm. Pappy, you are a repeat guest on Bar Talk. Thank you. But we want you back because we need to know more. First of all, what is with the Pelican? The Pelican. Well, uh, I put the Pelican on my shirt. And everybody wants to know, why the hell is there a pelican on this shirt? And nobody gets it. And I said, it would come out someday, and now the day okay. has come. The pelican all started in Daytona Beach. The brothers used to go down there every February for the Daytona 500. And we'd sit in our beachfront rooms and watch them pelicans fly by so beautifully. <laughs> And uh, one morning we was all jogging. And we'd, we'd get drunk every night or drink beer every night. Yeah. And then we'd get up in the mornings and we'd jog along the beach. That was a tradition in Daytona every year. Anyway, one morning we're jogging and I look back and I see a bird is struggling behind the, <laughs> off the main path. I don't know how I saw it, but I seen this bird and it was a pelican. It had like a fish hook or something in its mouth. And it was flopping its wings and it was almost dead. So I ran over there and I pulled the hook out of its mouth. He saved the pelican. I saved the pelican's life, I guess, because I pulled the hook out and then he kind of come back to life. You know, he's almost dead and he, he flew off. So and then ever since then, I said, man, that's an official brother bird. Well, who's the brothers? Nobody knows the brothers. Just oh, your group of buddies, right? Yeah, it's a group of buddies. It's a drinking and weightlifting organization started at Elmer's College in 1972. What a great organization. Yeah, and it's existed till now. But And I remember you always had a pelican on your shirts. Yes, and that's because we, that was the official bird because of that moment. And don't you have a pelican tattooed on your head? Yes, I do. If you ever see my head shaved, in the I, summer, I don't have now, but in the summer I do, there is a pelican tattoo on my head. And now you know where the pelican came from. Yes. There's the pelican story. Yeah. That's a good story. What's the craziest story you have? The craziest? <laughs> uh, Elmer's uh, College? Elmer's College, yes. You're a big track time, star, right? Yeah, I was a track star there. And uh, actually, this is after I graduated. I returned there. And I was taking a friend of mine named Dale Renner and uh, Tom Zippy Zipner home. I dropped him off. And as I was leaving, you know, I seen that there's a big track meet the next day at Elmhurst College. I drove by the track. All the hurdles was set up for like the 440 hurdles or something. So I don't know why I did it, but I just... 
drove my car around the track and I ran over all the hurdles. Set the, I guess I set the record for the, the 440 yeah. low hurdles or something in Elmer's College. But I did run over all the hurdles and break them all. And then you got chased by the police all the way back to Sycamore, didn't you? Yes, I was eventually arrested DUI. Yeah. But I still, to this day, hold the record for the 440 <laughs> hurdles in Elmer's College. That'll never be broken. That'll never be broken. Yeah. Kathy, do you have any other DUI stories? Well, there's one I probably should have got a DUI. This actually happened. Uh, there's a bar here about five miles uh, east of Sycamore called the Bungalow for a winter's circle. Yeah, the winter's circle. Bob Joe Speedway. Yeah, Bob Joe Speedway's located there. Yeah, it's a rough place. Very rough place. <laughs> but anyway, we used to all close the bars in Sycamore and we'd go there at like one or two in the morning. <laughs> But anyway, I was out there with uh, my brother-in-law, one time Nino Askins. We were just talking about Nino today. Yeah, I was out there with Nino Askins, and he somehow got in a fight with his girlfriend or something. And your girl, the girlfriend was your sister. Yeah, my sister. Anyway, they got in a fight, and uh, me and my girlfriend, which is my wife now, <laughs> anyway, we uh, Nino got mad, and he said, I'm screw this, I'm running home. It's five miles. So he thought he was joking, but I, you know. Hey, be quiet over there, peanut gallery. So anyway, as, we're, uh, I, as I'm going home, we closed the bar and I never thought of him running home, you know. But I guess he did, so we're driving home and I said, we better look for Nino. I bet he's on a bike path. Because there's a bike path that runs adjacent to the highway. Yes. So I turned on, I went down two miles to the first crossroad, came back up, then went back towards the bungalow on the bike path, looking for Nino on the bike path. Yeah, like two in the morning? Yeah, it was like two in the, two, three in the morning. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, it's going real slow, you know, like 10 miles an hour. <laughs> but anyway, I noticed this car on the other, on the highway watching me and going with me. Sure enough, I got up to the end of it. It's the police. And you couldn't get off, there's a pole there, so you could not pull off. And it was the state police. Oh boy. And the state police wanted to know, what in the hell are you doing on the bike path at 3 in the morning? I just explained, I'm looking for my brother-in-law, you know? What did they, what they, what they say? He didn't buy it. He said, well, <laughs> sir, I'm going to have to arrest you, DWI. <laughs> Unless you can back off of this. If you can back two miles off this bike path, I know that you are not loaded or drunk. <laughs> now I'll let you go. God, only in 1977 was something like that. Happened. I mean, it was very narrow. I mean, you couldn't make a mistake. Yeah. But sure enough, I backed all the way off that bike path two miles and got to the end, and the, the cop was waiting for me. He said, Okay, <laughs> you're not drunk. You can back that off of that. You're not drunk. Go ahead. Man, you can't do that kind of stuff nowadays. No. So <laughs> then I got off the bike path, headed towards Sycamore, and, and I get almost Sycamore, and I see the cops got another guy pulled over. Oh no, is that Nino? It's Nino. <laughs> I never heard this part of the story. Yeah, Nino is there and the cop has lights on. Here's Nino. <laughs> so I pull up behind the cops and that's the guy I'm looking for. <laughs> and so Nino hopped in the car and I took him home and everything turned out okay. Any other good that near arrest night. stories? That was a very crazy night. <laughs> Sounds like it. Mm -hmm. Any other times you've been pulled over before? Gotten in trouble with the law? Yeah, oh, the... Well, oh, this is Memorial Day. What? How many years ago was this? Probably 10? I would say 10 years ago, yeah. About 10 years ago, Memorial Day, we uh, we, we got crazy. Me and you. Yes. Me, you, and uh, Larry and Minigan. Yeah, Larry and Minigan, that's right. We went to uh, Burlington, a place called Mott's Who, Larry and Minigan are mentally handicapped. Yeah, they're mentally handicapped. But... Yeah. Larry, he can drive. He was so he was our drive. DD. Yeah. And Minigan, and then me and you in the back seat. Yeah, him and Minigan in the front, me and you in the back. And then we got drunker than hell. But here, before we even left, I remember we left the house, and Tommy said, let's get a cooler of beer. Mm -hmm. I said, no beer. No beer. We'll get beer when we get there. Which was a smart move. Yeah, very smart Because, move. uh... Yeah, later on we were pulled over coming back from Mott's Pub. Back I mean, it was like 90 degrees today. It was hot. Remember yeah. how hot it was? Oh, yeah. And we, Yeah, go ahead, son. Well, we went down. We were coming back. It was a major highway. 
Plank Road. Plank Road. And Larry Broadus, who's driving us, was swerving everywhere. Yeah, he was driving erratically. And yeah. we get into Sycamore, and we get pulled over by three or four squad cars. Yeah, county Remember? police. The county. The county police. Because these people are phoning him in. They, they, he was phoned in several times for driving erratically. And Larry never had any beer. No, he wasn't drinking. He was drinking Coke. And we're in the back seat, and one of my buddies is a police officer. It comes up. I roll the window down. Hey, what's going on? He's like, I'm like, hey, you tell me. Yeah, we're just, we got, this guy's been drinking. We're just going to another bar. He's your DD. Yeah. Well, that police officer calls my other buddy who's a police officer and says, you will not believe this, but I just pulled over Tom Finn with three retarded guys. <laughs> they, he was so drunk, they thought yeah. he was retarded. They thought I was retarded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we proceeded to get drunker. Then we went to skis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then. Uh, my mom had to pick us up. Yeah. She picks us up, yeah. finds me in the bar. I'm still at the bar drinking. Yeah. I don't know where you're at. She's like, where's your father at? Yeah. I don't know. I hop in the car. She starts driving home. And we go down the street. And uh, I said, there he is. You, you were passed out in the ground, on the, on the lawn of yeah. a church. Yes. That's and I had right. to help you up and get you in the car. Yeah, you got me home, though. And we got you home. And, yeah. yeah, that was a memorable night. Memorial Memorial Night. What a Memorial Day that was. <laughs> huh. It sounds like you two have a lot of drinking stories together, but we know that, Pappy, you're the one that got Tom into lifting and working out. Oh, yes. Yeah, what does your training consist of now, now that you're further along in your life? Well, I do a lot of bike riding. But you always bring beer with you on your bike ride. And I do a lot of push-ups. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do in the summer is put a six pack of beer in my cooler on my bike and head out north of town here. And I, every time I stop for a beer, I do about 50 push ups. It's one of my favorite things to do in the summer. So I, I do a lot of push ups, I do a little weightlifting. But I do have a bet with Tommy on the push ups. Yes. You said you're going to do over a million push-ups. Yes. And on your tombstone, you want to say, here lies the son of a bitch that did over one million push-ups. Yes, I do. And he's got them written down in that book over there. I keep track of every push-up I do. How close are you? I'm up to 583,000 push-ups right <laughs> he's now. He's got every one written down. And they're all Accounted documented, for. every one of them. <laughs> this bet was made like maybe 10, 12 years ago. Yes. And I am going to do it. Well, it's a hundred dollar bet too. Yeah, it is. But if you're dead, I don't know how I'm gonna collect the money. Well, the mother will pay you. Oh, okay, yeah. That's already been told. <laughs> it's already been set aside. Yep. Thank God. So hopefully I can get it done. I only got like four hundred thousand more to go. So. Yeah, it's. I mean, how old yeah. do you think it'll be then? Yeah, I can do them until I'm ninety, probably. I don't know. What are you, sixty-four? I'll be sixty-five this year. So sixty-four. <coughs> but and chill. I'm, uh, I'm my sixty-fifth birthday. I'll do. 650 push-ups. Speaking of bikes, the, my favorite bike story was when you drove to my house. Yes, I did drive to your house. He drove to my house on his bicycle. What, on your birthday or my birthday? Actually, it's just in the middle of the summer. Oh, what? Wow. A very hot day. And I'm 62 miles or 52 miles? Well, it's only 50, but I got lost. Yeah. It ended up being 65 miles. Yeah, we got very nervous. It was like 100 degrees that day, and all he had with him was beer. Yeah, now no water. Like 100 degrees. <laughs> I brought a six-pack of beer. Just... He didn't make it, but when he got off the bike, he couldn't even talk. Nah, I he was so had, dehydrated. I almost had heat stroke that day. Yeah, that very was very close. I was very proud of you that day. Yeah, and right when you got off the bike, I handed you a beer. Yeah. Hey, hey, take the bike! <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I got it on video somewhere. Yeah, I got it. Take the bike, take put the that bike. on. Let's put that on here if I can find it. Yeah, that, <laughs> that bike is now at Barbell Central. I broke the tire yeah, the other day. I saw it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you never took the bike home. You left it there. Yeah. So other than trying to get one hundred dollars out of your son, what motivates you to train? Drink more beer. That's the more they beer. train and do push ups, I can drink more beer. So then you don't get fat. Yeah. That's why I keep training. That's good motivation. Oh, it's excellent motivation. See, if I can do ride my bike 100 miles and do 1,000 push-ups, how many more beers can I drink? Right? 40? Then I don't feel guilty. Yeah. You know? Kathy. Plus, the beer gets more up. What's a car get? You know, 20 miles a gallon? 
I mean, I'd get like uh, 100 miles, you know, maybe a case of beer uh, on my bike. Pappy, do you have any final stories for this episode of Bar Talk? Uh, Anything that you're dying to get off your chest or stories you want to tell? Oh, I got a story I remember you telling me when I was younger. What's that? That story about uh, when the time you met Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh, yeah. I did met Jesse the Body. Right? Yes, I did. Rockford Boylan High School. Weren't you and Lippy going to be pro wrestlers or something? We were aspiring pro wrestlers, yes. <laughs> we uh, actually had a name for us. What? We were being. We we're going to be called the Handsome Heavyweights. Handsome Heavyweights? We had t-shirts and everything. What happened? You used to be handsome or something? Oh, yeah. Very handsome 40 years ago. <laughs> But I did meet, I did meet, uh, well, this happened in Rockford Boylan High School. We wore, being lippy, wore Dr. X masks to the matches. And we went to pay to get in, and they said, no, you guys don't got to, you just go right to the locker room. You guys got to pay to go back to the locker room. We entered the arena, and it was already, a, Jesse was wrestling. And it was dark in there, and I seen us come in, and everybody started hissing and booing, and Jesse stopped the match. <laughs> anyway, did nothing happened there, and the cops said, you guys sit in them seats, you're going to be arrested. <laughs> but anyway, after the match, I run into Jesse in the lobby. And uh, Tom said, Jesse, I want you to meet my brother. This is Tom Huck Finn. And I said, Jesse, I love you, glad to meet you. You know what he did? He went, I went like this, he went like this. That <laughs> son of a bitch! Yep. True story. Jesse, the body if I ever see you, I'm whipping your ass. Yep, true story. <laughs> he flipped me off right and right now. Uh, what a prick. Yeah. It's because you got the Dr. X mask on or he's just a prick? Probably a little of both. Yeah. Plus we've been drinking a little. <laughs> <laughs> that surprises me. <laughs> Dr. X mask. Yes, this is awesome. All right. Well, we're going to do one more bar talk. But my buddy Chug Boat, he's coming up next. Come on up, Chug Boat, introduce yourself. Yeah, Chug Boat. This will be part doing, two. Hey, Chug Boat, nice to hey, see you again, man. Nice, seeing you nice again. to see you. Pop that shirt off. Show him what a real man looks like. Yes. <laughs> he's yeah, small, you yeah. fat, <laughs> out of shape, Green Bay Packer sweat hogs out there. Yes. Let me show you what a real man looks yes, like. Yes, brother. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.